Welcome back friends. Serverless computing has been a game changer when it comes to cloud computing application development and execution models. It enables developers to build and run application code without provisioning or managing servers or backend infrastructure. In this lecture, we will do hands-on with AWS Lambda service. AWS Lambda is based on serverless computing, which lets you run your code without thinking about servers. It's a serverless service. You pay only for the compute time that your code consumes. There is no charge when your code is not running. With Lambda, you can run your code for virtually any application or backend service with zero administration. Essentially, you give your code and Lambda will run it for you because the service provider provides all the infrastructure to run the code. Essentially, it's a serverless service. The idea is that you can use a programming language to write your code. For example, .NET, .NET Core, Go, Java, Node, Python, and Ruby. You can also use the custom runtime. For example, if you click here, you can use AWS Lambda Rust Runtime. You write the code and upload it into the AWS Lambda console, and then AWS Lambda will run the code for you. Let's take a simple Python code. For example, in this Python code, we have a Lambda handler. It's going to print the event and then return hello from Lambda. Let's click on run. We got hello from Lambda as the output. That means the Lambda function just ran the code that we have provided. It's very simple, isn't it? How does the Lambda function get invoked? We can click on the run button. When I clicked on the run button, it ran and it displayed the output. But also, we can have Lambda respond to events. I want to show you this. I find it very cool. Let's click here. As you can see, events can come from various sources. For example, this is streaming analytics. The streaming analytics is sending events into the Lambda function. And the Lambda function is continuously returning the output. But it's not just streaming analytics. For example, if you click on the phone here, it will invoke the Lambda function and send a message to your mobile IoT backend. On the same concept, if you take a photo and upload it to the S3 bucket for data processing, the Lambda function can be invoked to handle data processing. But the cool thing is that if you start clicking on this a little faster, see what happens. If you start clicking faster, as you can see here, it is scaling and processing those events seamlessly. It is not choking up. In other words, the system is scaling up as the load increases to help the Lambda function process all events that are coming from the streaming analytics. That's very cool. Let's click here and now we can see the 150,953 invocations, but the cost is still zero. For requests under 1 million, the cost will be zero. At the moment, it crosses more than 1 million. You will see that the cost will increase here. Let's click here. The moment we crossed 1 million, the cost started increasing. For under 1 million invocations, it's free and you will not get charged. That's the whole idea. It means the Lambda will automatically scale with our load when we have more load. As you can realize, that's the whole power of using Lambda as compute platform. And this is why it is called serverless because we don't have to provide any server. You don't need to set up any server here, right? You give the code and AWS Lambda will run your code as it is a serverless service. It scales automatically. And for first 1 million requests, it's free. After that, the Lambda function is charged based on the time it takes to run your function. This is very, very cost efficient in that sense, right? You can play more with this and see how the cost moves up. That was an introduction to the AWS Lambda function. Now let's click on the create function here. Three options have been provided. One is author from scratch. The other is use a blueprint. The third is container image. We are going to create our own function. I will choose use a blueprint. Let's name it, which describes the purpose of function, the hello world. And for the role, we will create a new role with basic limited permissions. And then here is the code. This function will be a Lambda handler printing these three values and then return one of them. Let's go ahead and create this function. Now the function is being created. Let's test this function and see what we get. We have to give the event name. Let's give this event a name. We will be passing this JSON event, which has three key value pairs. Key one and value one, key two and value two, and key three and value three. If you want something else, you can change it. For example, item name, item price, or item description, you can change it. Essentially, the function will display whatever you pass here as key value inputs. Let's run it. See what we get here. This was the response returned from the Lambda function. You see, it displayed these three values. The last line was returned, and these three values were displayed from the print function. 
and this was the duration it took to run and this was the build duration. This is the memory size and this memory size was actually used. And init duration, because this was the first run for this function, it was the initial duration to run your code and this was the actual build time. But this was the initial duration because this was the first time the code ran. The next time when you run, you don't see that init duration. Let's run it again. So now you don't see the init duration, you only see the build duration it ran. The build duration is 2 milliseconds and the duration it ran is 1.5 and memory size is 128 and the maximum memory used is 36 MB. So let's see a couple of things here. If you go for example monitor, we can see here that it logs various logs about the function we executed. For example, if I click on the log and this was the last log and you could see the various things. It has value 1, value 2 and value 3 and all the logs are written in this log file. If something goes wrong, we can come here and see what happened, why it didn't work the way you expected. This was one thing. And from here, we can go to CloudWatch logs and we could see here that same thing that was there. We can also find it here. Let's close it. Let's come to function again. And another thing is that you can see the configuration. This was monitored. This was the test part. This is the code part. This is the monitoring part. And this is the configuration. If you see it in the configuration and the CloudWatch log permission we associated with this Lambda function. That's the reason that we can see here. So that was one thing. The important part is that when you run the code, mostly what happens if something goes wrong, you go in and view your log to find out why it has happened. You can go to the configuration and see whether the configuration is correct or not. If you click on configuration, you can see how much memory it is taking. If you want, you can increase this memory to say 128 to 256 MB. If you think that your code needs that much memory, and this is the ephemeral storage that is assigned to your Lambda function. This is just for temporarily writing something. Suppose that your code wants to write something temporarily. You can use this and timeout. Timeout is the maximum amount of time a Lambda function can run. Lambda runs your code for a set amount of time before timing out. The default value for the timeout setting is 3 seconds. But you can adjust this in increments of 1 second up to a maximum value of 15 minutes. Remember that you are billed based on how long your code runs. And 15 minutes is the max time under which your code should execute and you are built based on how long your code takes to execute and how many execution invocations. I hope you understood how AWS Lambda works.